Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over to Trenta with Soleiman Rahim, who's a Senior Director of Engineering. And today we're going to talk about power optimization. So Soleiman, we are looking at trying to optimize power every which way in designs because that's really one of the big gating factors. What are we up against? How do we solve this? And what do we have to do to really improve it? It's a good question, Ed. So the recent boom in the mobile gaming and other high-tech consumer uh, market um, has uh, generated the need of running multiple applications on the same SOCs faster than even before. And this has generated uh, you know, major challenges in the uh, battery life of your uh, mobile devices or in the cost of the cooling system of your wired devices. Therefore, like hardware and software engineers are constantly looking for new methods to uh, optimize for power. So traditionally, uh, power optimization was done at the physical, uh, physical level. So uh, by performing clock gating, um, using different VT libraries, or doing uh, cell sizing, and so forth. Uh, to address uh, the new power problems, uh, there is a need now to do a power optimization at the SOC Articular planning level and at the RTL coding itself for IPs and subsystems. Why don't you walk us through the methodology here? So, usually, um, designers have to meet a certain power budget and a certain peak power budget. Uh, to achieve that, they usually go over uh, methodology uh, in, in four steps. The first one is to uh, perform like a power estimation of your design, and this to uh, get you know early. Uh, power profile of the block and to do that usually people go through what we call like a correlation exercise so correlation exercise is to establish the power of your design for a specific technology node and uh, design profile so when you have done the correlation exercise you usually achieved uh, the first step to kind of get uh, early uh, indication of the power of your design so the second step is to do power profiling, and this is to uh, analyze different power metrics of your design. The first power metric you want to analyze is the activity. So the activity uh, gives you, you know, a knowledge of the block uh, with high activity or low activity. And if you have a specific block with low activity, then you can apply different power optimization strategy for that block. Then you look at the power of your design, right? And by looking at the power of your design, you can do, for example, what-if analysis. You, you can try to implement, uh, you know, several macro architecture using different uh, architecture and look at the delta of power. Then what you do is you look at the clock gating of your design. So this is important because you want to know how efficient are your clock gating. You know, if the clock gating is not efficient enough, then you can implement a different strategy to improve the clock gating and optimize your power. So when you have done the power profiling, the uh, next step is to do power reduction. So those, the power profiling give you an early indication, like an indication of where to look at, what are the places where you can optimize for power. And then the, third, the, the, the power reduction is basically what are the change I can do to uh, 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 optimize for power. And for the power reduction, there are several techniques that you can apply and we're going to review them later. And when you have done the power reduction and you have basically optimized your design for power, you and you have met your power budget and your peak power budget, what you do is you put your design into a regression. And you put your design into a, re into a regression to kind of like, for each RTL drop, you want to monitor that your uh, power is still under the budget that uh, has been defined. How accurate is any of this information in the beginning? Is it 100%? Is it 50%? So um, it really depends on the input that you have. So if you have like a, a vector which is um, represented, representative of, your, uh, of, your, uh, of the application that you are running, uh, that you are running then uh, the data will be uh, accurate. But if your vector is not good enough, then you might actually not get accurate data. And to do power exploration, you need accurate data. And we'll, we'll have a section uh, explaining why you know, accurate vectors are needed to um, to perform efficient power optimization. Okay. So let's dig into this a little bit more here. So basically, to um, implement this methodology, you need like a strong power exploration solution, and power exploration solution should guide you 
uh, towards the blocks in your design with the highest potential for power optimization. So to do that, what you need to do, you need to display the different power metrics into different uh, dimension of your design. So for example, here, what we can do is for each year care instance, we display the power data. So you, for this example, you have a design name top. The design top has two blocks, A and B, right? And for the design top, we have, we have you know, um, shown the dynamic power of the, of the design, which is 10 milliwatt, the static power of the design, which is 5 milliwatt, the clock getting ratio, which is 85%, the clock getting efficiency, which is 60%, the activity of the, of the, of the top level design, and then we have estimated what can be the power saving on that block, which is 3.01 milliwatt. Then now, if you look at the, the, the block, the block A, we see that the dynamic power is 8 milliwatt, the static power is 1 milliwatt, the clock getting ratio is 80%, the clock getting efficiency is 55%, the activity is almost null, 0.01, and the potential saving on that block is 3 milliwatt. The, the block B has 2 milliwatt of, of dynamic power, 4 milliwatt of static power, 85% of clock getting ratio, 70% of clock getting efficiency, the activity is 0.1, and the potential saving is 0.01 milliwatt. So now I have represented uh, the design and, and through different power metrics and I can make some uh, decision now based on those, uh, those metrics. I can see that the block B, for example, has a very high static power and a very uh, and low uh, dynamic power. So here, if my goal is to uh, um, improve the dynamic power, this is not a good block for me to focus on. I need to focus my time on the block A because the dynamic power of the block A is 8 milliwatt and there's like a potential saving of 3 milliwatt and the clock gain efficiency is, is still pretty low, 55%. So now, if I, if I improve the clock gain efficiency of the block A, I will be able to improve the dynamic power and my, uh, my, my power saving can be pretty important. So here I can probably, you know, if I'm able to save the 3 milliwatt, that will represent 30% of the total design power. But for the, if I focus my time on focusing on B, my power saving is very little. So even if I spend several hours on that block, I might maybe achieve one or two percent power saving. So now using you know this kind of like table, I'm I can make the decision to spend my time on the block A. Same thing here, where here we have like a year care representation of the design. We can look at the clock representation of the design also, where you have like a top the top level clock and that top level clock generate another clock, clock one through an ICG cell, and that generate another clock two through another ICG cell. And we can look by representing the same matrix for those clocks, that the clock one, clock in efficiency 50%, the clock two, clock in efficiency 0%. So where, where should I focus my time on is maybe on the clock two, because the clock efficiency is 0%. The clock one is, 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 is already a pretty good clock, because there's a clock in efficiency of 50%. Now I should like, go and focus on, on the clock two, identify all the flop that the clock two is driven and focus my time on those one and not on the flop driven by the clock one, for example. You know, people have been getting chips out the door for a long time. How much of this is brand new in terms of where to allocate your time and does it really, when do you really need it? Is it at 28 nanometers? Or is it at 14 nanometers? So it's actually, uh, that's a good question. So this is, um, it's like a new approach of exploring the design. So usually people gather a lot of data, right? And they might actually not gather all the data, they might just uh, focus on power, right? And they don't look at the clock getting ratio, the clock getting efficiency, or the activity, or even what are the potential power saving. So those things originally was not done. They were really focusing on the power, and because of that, they might actually go in the wrong direction and go focus their time here, for example, on the... Because the total power of B is 6 milliwatt. This is 9 milliwatt. They might say, oh, I'm going to go focus my, my time on B, and this is like a wrong decision. But if they look at all the metrics, they can actually go and focus their time on the right direction. So this is actually uh, new, and it, it's it's you know you have to use those kind of methodology even at the 28 nanometers. So this is this is like a problem uh, which is there in the 20 nanometers. So uh, yeah, so I think this is a pretty uh, inno innovative method methodology. So now that you've identified some of the issues that you have to deal with, what do you have to do to really dig into this? Yeah. So after identifying the block that you want to spend time on, you, what you do is you go and dive into uh, what we call slave views. 
uh, to do fine uh, grain analysis. So here there is like different view of the design. The first one is what we um, I call like the activity triggers views, and this is basically what are the signal in the design uh, triggering activity on the block that we're analy analyzing. So this is like an important information as we're gonna see later how we can use this information to do power optimization. The other one is what we call the macro architecture views, and this is where we list for the block all the macro architecture of the design. So FIFOs, shifter, counter, FSM, and so forth. And for those uh, macro architecture, we provide different information. One is the size, the width, the dynamic power, the static power, and the clock getting efficiency. And again, having all this information, you can make smarter decisions. So for example, here I have a FIFO, I have a shifter and a counter. If I look at the, just the width, I say, oh, the FIFO is 96 uh, flop. I should maybe spend my time there, but that would be a wrong decision. Why? Because if I look at the dynamic power and at the static power, I can see that the static power is higher than the dynamic power and the clock efficiency is 99%. So my chance to optimize that FIFO is very little. But if I look at the shifter and the counter, they might have less flop, right? It's a 32-bit uh, shifter and 60-bit uh, counter. And if I look at the power information, I can see, well, if I look at the dynamic power of the shifter is 1 milliwatt and the clock is 65%. So by doing more clock gaining, I might I might be able to get pretty good power saving. Same thing for the counter. The, the dynamic power is 0.5 milliwatt. The static power is 1 point, uh, 0.1 milliwatt, and the clock efficiency is zero percent. So here there is pre pretty good room to improve the clock gaining efficiency and improve the dynamic power. So by having those different data and uh, in in and all the macro criteria, you can make smarter decision. The next view is what I call the register view, and this is like. Uh, list of all the register uh, of your block and for those register we provide you know the power uh, data uh, uh, and the width so the dynamic power the static power the clock gating the q over cp and what i call the observative probability and adding again all this information in one table may uh, give you a chance to make smarter decision so if i look at here i have like three different flow data range cpu and control range if I look at only the width, I can see well, data range has 512 flop. Hmm, I should spend my time there. If I didn't have the other data, I would probably go and spend my time uh, to try to optimize that flop. But that would be again a wrong decision. Why? Because I can see that my clock getting efficiency is pretty high. The, the, the dynamic power is 0.5 milliwatt, so, and my leakage power is 0 0.45 milliwatt. So hmm, if I spend a lot of time here, I will optimize maybe 0.5 milliwatt. But if I look at the activity, I have it, it's pretty active and the, the observative probability is zero, meaning that there is no much chance for us to optimize our power. But if I look at the other uh, flop, the width might be less, but I have higher chance to optimize our power because I can see here that the observative probability of the CPU range is 0.8, so there's like a lot of chance to find ODC, what we call ODC condition, and, and I, can, I can also improve the clock efficiency same thing for the control register where the activity actually of this flop is zero, meaning that there is no activity and the clock is toggling. So this is a very good candidate for power optimization. So again, having all this data in the table make me, uh, make, uh, give me a chance to make smarter decision. Then finally, what we have is the memory view where we list the memory of the design for that, uh, not the design, for the, the block that you have chosen. And we look at the size of the memory, and again, the activity, what's the read frequency, the write frequency, and what's the observative probability. So here, again, we have two memories, right? And if you look, they have the same size, the same activity. But for one memory, we never read and we never write, and the other memory, we often read and we often write. Where should I spend my time? It's on the second memory. This is where I often read and often write. So if I find a way of reducing the read frequency and the write frequency, I'm gonna save power. But if I focus my time on the first memory, then there is no way for me to optimize for power. So again, having all this data will, will, will help me making smarter decision. And finally, the last view is the power, power reduction opportunities. So if you have implemented a list of techniques and you have run those techniques on your design, you can list all your techniques, what are the complexity of the change. So when you have find an opportunity, what are all the design changes I have to do to implement uh, that opportunity? And you can you know, come with like a complexity matrix to, um, to kind of like uh, identify all the design change that you have to do. And then what's the power saving you can obtain uh, with this technique? So here I have three techniques, the counter, what we call the activity trigger detection technique, and uh, what we call an ODC.